also now let us understand what is happening on the right side of the circuit so on the right side of the circuit if you remember we had a PMOS which was turned on because it got its input from A which was 0 so this was on and at the same time what was also happening was this NMOS transistor which we labeled it as N4 and the other part of it and the other was bit bar line which was also at VDD N4 was also on because its input was word line which was nothing but VDD and here was nothing but my node B so what was happening on the right hand side was that because this PMOS transistor which we labeled as P2 was on it used to pull node B to VDD remember the assumption that B was already at logic 1 or at VDD and P2 was keeping it that way so P2 in a way was helping B to be where it was at the same time N4 being on because the word line was high both its terminals B and bit bar both were at VDD so there was no current flow so in summary there was nothing happening at the right side of the circuit and with that what we understood was if we wanted to read a zero at A then W by L of N1 should be stronger than W by L of N3 and with that we complete the read stability criteria. Now let's go ahead and understand the write stability criteria. For that again we'll quickly make our SRAM. I am sure everyone is very thorough now with the diagram. This is nothing but my PMOS, this is my NMOS, this is my VDD, this is my ground. Let's make one more of those oppositely placed. PMOS, NMOS, it's quite easy isn't it? Then we'll connect the output of the first to the input of the other one. Output of the second to the input of the first one. One more thing which we had was our NMOS transistors connected to the output. This transistors are nothing but pass transistors. When an NMOS or a PMOS is used individually, they are called pass transistors. And they are also used, as I mentioned in the previous class to read. So this was node A, this was node B, cool. This was my bit line, this was my bit bar line. Both the NMOS transistors were shorted the input of them and we call it as word line. Let's quickly label all our transistors back again. P1, P2, N1, N2, N3 and N4. So our assumption was A was initially written a 0 and B was initially written a 1. Now we want to start with the right operation or understand the right stability criteria. Let's understand what we are going to do first. Because A was previously written with a 0, what we want to do is we want to write a 1 at A. Remember, the one in yellow color is what we want to write. Previously was a zero. If I have to write a one at A, can I easily and safely say that is as good as writing a zero at B? Not confusing at all because they are cross coupled. It's very, very self-explanatory. Okay, here we start. Assumption is A was initially written as zero and B was initially written as 1 initially this is the initial values now what we want to do is we want to write yes that's correct a 1 at a and it's as good as writing a 0 at b fantastic let's understand this was the initial condition we need to do first and foremost make a word line high. When my word line is high, we saw in the previous clips 
that because this is nothing but equal to VDD and this input is going to N3 and N4, my N3 and N4 transistors are going to turn on. Now what we are going to do is we are going to make a bit line equal to VDD and my bit bar line equal to zero. In the future clips we will see how can we do this.